In this video, we will continue the news.cfm page by taking a look at the sidebar. Remember, in the sidebar, we need to output the list of years in which news have been released. So to do so, I will return to the top of the page and I will create a second CF query to query the database once again. And I will query the same HD3 data source. I will give a name to that CF query I will name it RS News Years. That's the name of the variable. In the query, I need to select something. I need to select the news creation date field. I need to take that field from the news table. And I will once again order by the news creation date in descending order from the newest one to the oldest one. So let's test the query with a CF dump. So I will dump this variable. And the variable that I want to dump is RS news years. There we go. Let's now save and run the page. And there you go, you have the news creation dates of each news and you have it in descending order from the newest news to the oldest news. Now, we don't need the news creation date. What we need is just the year. So let's return to ColdFusion Builder and we will add something here to the select statement. We will ask for only the year part of that field using the year function. Now, something to really keep in mind and to understand here. The year function that I just wrote in the select statement will be executed by the database. This is not a function of ColdFusion. It's a function of the database. ColdFusion will just send that instruction in the database engine, and it is the database that will take only the year part of that information, not ColdFusion. So let's save and run the page and you see here that I have retrieved only the date from that FLD news creation date field. Now also notice the name of that field. Here the name of the field is one. This is because the information that I have now from the query does not exist as this in the database. It is the result of a process, of a field that has been processed. So to give that a meaningful name, I will once again change the select statement here and I will use the S keyword to give that field the name that I want. FLD news year, for example. So let's save and run the page again. And you see now the query, the field here has a name and in that news year field, I have only the year part of the FLD news creation date. This is the power of SQL. It has nothing to do with ColdFusion so far. Now that the query is correct, let's remove that dump and we will go to the next part of the process, which is to output that data on the page. So it will happen here in that UL. So this is a list in HTML, UL and LI. And I will remove all the list items, all the li tags, and uh, to replace them with a CF output block. And I will ask that CF output to loop around the news years query. Now, what do I need to output? I need to output the li. And notice that the li tag here is inside of the loop, so I will have one li, one list item for each item in the RS News Years uh, query. Now inside of that li, I will need an HTML link. So I use the a tag of HTML and the address of the link will be once again news.cfm. Now inside of the a tag, what will be written, what the user will click on will actually be the FLD news year field of the query. So let's copy paste that here to avoid typos, save and run the page. Now here you see that I have three news that have been published in 2015. So I have 2015 that appears 
three times, once for each news. And I have 2014 only one time because I have only one news that has been uh, published in 2014. So to avoid that and have 2015 only one time, let's do one more thing in Call Fusion. It's another attribute of the CF output tag. I want to group those pieces of data by the FLD news year. So let's now run that page and you see that I have the news archive. The good news here is that if I publish an, a news in 2016, automatically the 2016 entry will be added to the sidebar. I won't have to modify anything in the code to have those years added as time passes.